Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am your brother Nuh. I am a khatib filmmaker and student of knowledge from the so-called SoCal area. I am moderating the session, What in the World? Next up, we have uh, a treat. Professor, Professor Sharif Muhammad is going to speak to us. He is the director of research for Black, the Black Dawa Network. Uh, Professor Sharif Muhammad has taught Islamic studies and African American studies at Spelman University, mashallah. Sharif holds a Bachelor of Arts and Sciences in History from Central State University and a Master's Degree in History from Kent State University. And he's going to share with us a topic called Islam is Incomplete Without Justice. And how adequately timed is this, my dear brother, for you to be talking about this in the state that our nation is in and all the stuff that is going on we welcome you and we thank you, uh, Professor Sharif Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran Sahakaidan for having me. Um, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, as uh, the brother was very generous uh, in introducing me, my name is Sharif Muhammad. I am the director of the Black Dawa Network. Uh, we are an Islamic outreach network that seeks to introduce Islam to African Americans, particularly in depressed urban areas. The network grew out of the need to address doubts about the religion of Islam within black communities, uh, despite there being African American Muslim luminaries like uh, Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz, Rahimahullah, also known as Malcolm X, and Muhammad Ali, uh, there is still an ambivalence uh, that many African Americans have towards Islam. Um, many believe that it is an Arab religion, that it has been a tool in the enslavement and subjugation of African people. And this is a very forceful, enduring critique and diatribe against Islam. And we noticed that there was a lack of strong responses to these claims, um, that much of the dawah that was being um, administered to a lot of young brothers and sisters, African-American brothers and sisters within the urban areas uh, was not relevant to the social and cultural conditions of most African-Americans. The nationalist attacks on Islam uh, coupled with the general apathy uh, towards religion, particularly organized religion, um, that has enveloped the country, has caused a lot of this dawah to fall flat. Now, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah makes Muslims and the shahadas are coming. But there was a black Muslim tradition that was very powerful during the early 1900s and lasted, I would say, up until the mid-90s that we have somewhat gotten away from and Islam has, African-American and Islam have somewhat become adrift of each other. So we knew that the Dawah needed to address the doubts that many of our people had about Islam, especially as it related to the ongoing black struggle. And I say ongoing because the current events within the past couple of years, several years actually, uh, have uh, forced these old issues to the forefront of our consciousness. And so the Black Dawa Network came in to being as a resource center to address many of these concerns. Now, you know, I love the topic of this program, uh, the topic of today's presentation, Islam incomplete without justice, because as the brother said, it is appropriately titled because it speaks to what is happening in this country today, which has been happening for the past several centuries. Uh, what should be the role of the Muslims during these times? We know that justice is a core principle in Islam. It is a central theme in the Quran uh, and the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, Al-Adl, the most just, 
is one of the 99 names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for himself. Uh, in the Quran, we are given such admonishments as oppression is worse than slaughter. Or in Surah al maidah where Allah says, O oh, you who believe, be persistently standing firm for Allah witnesses injustice and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just, that is nearer in righteousness. We are also told to beware of the prayers of the oppressed because there is no screen between it and Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has ordered us to assist any oppressed person, whether they be Muslim or not. So throughout the Quran, and a hadith, we are reminded that justice is a divine virtue and striving for it is a sacred duty. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his prophetic mission demonstrated that Islam began as a justice movement, right? And the first ones to heed the call of this movement were who in the Arabian Peninsula? Many of them were ex-slaves. Today in America, most of the people who have heeded the call of Islam are ex-slaves. What is it about this message that has always attracted the downtrodden and marginalized? Well, it is this emphasis on justice. Islam stands out as a faith tradition that incorporates social equity in piety. It sacralizes the resistance to oppression. I mean, when you look at history during the 1800s, early 1900s, you see that at the height of anti-colonialism in Sub-Sahara, West Africa, you see an increase in conversions to Islam. Um, during the civil rights era on through the racist draconian war on drugs, uh, you see a steady growth in the number of African Americans who are embracing Islam. So Islam has this character that defies what Karl Marx said, which is that religion is the opiate of the masses. On the contrary, Islam has always been the stimulant for justice and anti-oppressive movements. Islam has always caused the fomenting of liberation uh, from the ground up. So this is a very unique character of Islam is that the explicit emphasis it places on striving for justice and opposing oppression. Now, when surveying the Muslim world today, it's hard to find rulers committed to creating the kinds of societies that Rasulullah wasallam implored us to create during his last khutbah. Uh, we can feel that the fitna is all around us. But, uh, you know, one of the translations of fitna is a trial. And it is with trials that the spirit is strengthened and cleansed of impurities like the steel of a well-made sword fashioned at the highest temperatures. It is by trials that Allah SWT tests our purported metal. The Muslims won't, will not be left alone by simply saying they stand for justice. The least of faith is to hate oppression in your heart, but the most pious act is to take action with your hands. And so Muslims in the West and specifically in America are in a unique position to effectuate a paradigm shift because America is a media center. We are living in a cultural hegemon. Now, there is no doubt that we are in the age of a Black Lives Matter. It is a very, it is very significant that we as Muslims who profess to be committed to justice do more to make sure that the Muslim voice is heard and that it is not drowned out or compromised by other voices which have secularized the fight against oppression. We want to sacralize the fight. It is only by anchoring the struggle for justice in a sacred narrative that we will be able to 
see beyond the setbacks and failures. Sometimes the powers that be seem so insurmountable that it is hard to not give into despair and pessimism. But the powerful vicar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater, shrinks even the largest obstacles. So like David looking at Goliath, an indomitable foe appears small through the lenses of Iman. Without a faith tradition, without a faith tradition, justice is an ambiguous concept limited to the scope of our conventions. It fails at becoming an absolute value and thus isn't worth defending. And so this is why the black struggle has always been tied to faith. And this is the context or the experience that gave rise to the black Muslim tradition. Uh, we must take advantage of being in a country that has the gaze of the entire world. And there are a couple of questions that have confronted us and that I've been asked. First is, how can we all work together for justice, especially within inner cities? Because inner cities are where systemic and structural racism are most evident. Well, we have to acknowledge that there we have to acknowledge that there have been some discord between African-American and immigrant Muslims in the country. We have to acknowledge this. Uh, the latter have tended to see America only as a land of opportunity and refuge, while the former have experienced it as a land of racial hostility and broken promises. Uh, one has emerged from slavery, the other has emerged from colonialism, but both have been subjected to the dehumanization of Eurocentric rule. Yet and still, there have been allies. There have been allies. Ahmed Didat, uh, the great Da'i, um, Imam Abdullah Harun, were two non-black allies who stood in solidarity with the black struggle. We have gotten away from this to a substantial degree, but these men understood that actively opposing racism, like the apartheid in South Africa, was an act in piety. Secondly, what steps must be taken by the Muslim community to uplift the condition of African American community? Uh, we must be organized. An unorganized person concerned with justice is a contradiction in terms. Oppression is organized, whether it be the Muslims in China, Palestinians, Syrians, Yemenis, Kashmiris, or the black and brown bodies in the veritable concentration camps of urban ghettos. These are state and corporate sponsored injustices and the condition of African Americans in the inner city must be combated in an organized and well financed manner. Uh, the Black Dawa Network, which I have been a part of for some years now, has tackled this um, intently, intensively. And currently, we are organizing an event in New Orleans uh, that will uh, be organized exclusively by formerly incarcerated African-American Muslim reverts. Uh, we are seeking to raise $5,000 to carry out this and other programs. So if you are interested in uh, helping to promote uh, Islamic values in the inner city, uh, we are asking that you go to blackdawanetwork.com, B-L-A-C-K, Dawa, D-A-W-A-H, network.com, and make a donation. Uh, these programs have focused specifically on ameliorating the conditions of young inner city African American, male and female, who have been struck the hardest by systemic and structural racism. So I have about five minutes. I was going to just introduce to you briefly to some of the work that has been done um, real quickly.
This is uh, some of the programs we have been working on. The Block to Dawa, the Block to Block Dawa uh, program is a program in which uh, we coordinate with Masajid across the country within the inner city and hit the streets, passing out free copies of the autobiography of Malcolm X, um, talking about his legacy and relevance to them, passing out translations of the Quran, and having heartfelt discussions about how Islam can elevate them in their current circumstances, and directing them to their local masjid so they can get a sense of uh, an Islamic environment. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not necessary to condemn a dirty glass, just set a clean one next to it. And so we're trying to introduce to our people Islam as that, that clean glass. Um, our other program is the mosque consultation services where we assist Masajid in the inner city in addressing social ills such as gang violence, drug addiction, and other social ills, um, and how they can be more engaged with the broader African-American Muslim community. Our other program, Timbuktu Reform, is an online African-American Islamic Dawah Academy that provides training to African-American Muslims in addressing some of the persisting accusations and claims against Islam. Um, the competing ideologies within the black community, Afrocentrism, Marxism, black Orientalism, etc., uh, have tried to frame justice as according to their logic. And it's, we are presenting the Islamic framework for understanding justice. Uh, the other program is uh, African American, is bringing African American scholars uh, from different fields to produce scholarly work that addresses specific social ills and arguments against Islam. I published a book entitled uh, a, An Invitation to Islam for Black Marxists, uh, which looks at dealing with evaluating Marxist claims on liberation and asserting that Islam is a more holistic liberation theology, more practical for addressing the overall issues regarding African Americans and people in general. And the other is an invitation to Islam for Afrocentrists, which addresses specifically the arguments and claims made by Afrocentrists about Islam. Um, as I said, we are currently seeking to raise $5,000 to carry out uh, these initiatives. Um, and our website contains our articles, also a link to my website in which I present uh, articles as well. Um, please you know, feel free to visit our website and make a contribution. And remember, I'll leave you with the question, the question that we have to realize is that you know, during times of crises and peril, people will not remember the Muslims for their arcane uh, theological debates or rigorous sectarianism, but we remember for where we stood on the injustices of our day. Thank you for listening. It was a pleasure uh, listening to you and, and enjoying you today. Uh, may Allah continue to bless you uh, and the mistakes that I've made. All praise be to Allah, only the mistakes are mine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, uh, we appreciate you, your, your knowledge that you shared. Like I said before, what a pivotal time uh, for Islam and what it offers our communities. And uh, I thank you for all the points that you picked up on. I, I hope everybody who was uh, watching this uh, takes note. This is, this, is the, this is the answer. This is the answer. Islam is the answer to what's going on in society right now. So we need a Black Dawa uh, organization in every single city. African-Americans are one third 
of the Muslims in America. So this is this is very pivotal. What you're what you're saying, uh, Sheikh, uh, Professor. Uh, uh, we thank you. Um, the next question is for uh, the Professor Sharif Muhammad, and you touched upon how we need to be better at dawah within the Muslim. Uh, black Muslim communities. So why do you think that um, the Dawah effort is lacking in the black Muslim communities? The black Muslim tradition I've referred to during the present that I referred to during the presentation is a is a tradition which emphasizes a people's struggle against the existential threat of oppression. And much of the data that has started to hit a lot of urban areas during the uh, late 90s and going on into the early 2000s has focused on theology, while not understanding that for African-Americans, the history of African-American religion is that theology or uh, belief in the supreme being and social issues are inseparable from each other. Many of us came to Islam because we saw in Islam the perfect harmony between those two. Imam al-Alamin, political prisoner, who also uh, formerly known as H. Rap Brown said that um, we were in the struggle, referring to the civil rights movement, we were in the struggle, but we didn't have a book. And he said the book, the manual for the struggle, they saw was the Quran. That what Islam does is it marriages, it marriages uh, or, or brings together uh, social equity and, and piety. And in order to get us to care about uh, the more deeper, we, we, a lot of us, because we're faced with the perniciousness of, the precariousness of life in uh, a country that is oftentimes hostile to us, and in particularly urban areas, many of which are enclaves of social terror, the more theological discussions are irrelevant. The way to that is, what does Allah SWT say about your condition? That's what black religion I mean, is focused on, and that is the best of the black Muslim tradition. Alhamdulillah, beautiful, beautiful answer. And I would like to um, just make a call to action to everybody that's out to, um, support ICNAS efforts in putting up billboards, mailing postcards, and running social media campaigns on the topic of justice and racism, uh, like the professor is saying. Um, there have been bi billboards put up in cities like the Bay Area, Sacramento, Houston, Atlanta, New Jersey, Chicago, Canada, and the theme is Islam prohibits racism. So it's the efforts of ICNA to unite with the black community and the movements that are going on. Please support uh, ICNA.org uh, slash donate and support these efforts that are going on because they, the push is there, is there to support these, these efforts within the black community and the injustice that we're seeing all, all around America. And, and may Allah uh, bless and protect us and keep us uh, rightly guided in the Salat al mustaqim أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولي سعادة المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو غفور رحيم السلام عليكم